Welcome to our channel, Living in Fort Lauderdale with Kevin Sues. I'm Kev. I'm Sues. And today we're going to talk about living in Pompano Beach or Deerfield Beach, which is better for you. This has kind of unofficially become known as the Battle of the Beaches. So you have the bigger brother, Pompano Beach, which is a little bit larger, more things going on in Pompano Beach. You also have to the north his little brother, Deerfield Beach. So we're going to talk a little bit about Pompano Beach, and we're going to talk a little bit about Deerfield Beach, and kind of leave it up to you to uh, kind of make a choice. You decide which is better for you. Exactly. A couple of interesting things about Pompano Beach. Pompano Beach is definitely the bigger of the two. It's been around for a little bit longer, but has a lot more going on. If you're looking for a little more active nightlife, you're looking for something that's a little bit more diverse, both uh, from the standpoint of food and entertainment and things going on, Pompano Beach may be where you want to kind of start your search. We're going to go ahead and check out the pier here, which is just basically built two years ago in 2019, and it's really become kind of the center point of Pompano Beach. We'll show you some of the other things that have gone on in Pompano Beach, like the new parking garage, which is made it so much easier to come and enjoy the beach down here. Also with some retail underneath it so that uh, you can basically go park your car and go get yourself something quick and cool to drink or something quick to eat with that before you even come to the beach. I think the parking garage added an extra 669 parking spots, which also has uh, lights to let you know the availability of the parking spot, which is very nice. What it has really done is just cut down on the number of cars that are jammed up in front of the beach to block your view of the beach when you're coming walking up through the beach. Those of you that have been down here before, one of the things you've seen is that when you try to come to the beach, especially during the high season, and if you come in the mid to late afternoon or early evening, there's all kinds of cars that are blocking everything to get in and causing traffic jams and everything else. This garage has gone a long way to help reduce a lot of that. So we'll go ahead and take a little walk down the pier and kind of show you what's going on in the Pompano Beach Pier. You can see a lot of people out here fishing go out sightseeing, do some walking. At the entrance of the pier, you can rent fishing, fishing tackle and fishing poles. Come out here and spend a day fishing, catch whatever you want. They have little stations so that you can uh, you can get them cleaned and everything else. Yeah, the bait stations. Really, really nice, nice place to go. Go for a walk or to go spend an afternoon just kind of sitting out, relaxing, and enjoying the, uh, enjoying the sights. between Pompano Beach and Deerfield Beach is Lighthouse Point, named for the lighthouse that's actually out there. And you can check out our videos on Lighthouse Point to get more information on the lighthouse itself. It's about two or three miles up the road. It's absolutely awesome to see, so especially when they turn the light on. It is an actual functioning lighthouse. Deerfield Beach is about seven, seven and a half miles from Pompano Beach as a crow flies. Depending upon what road you take, it could be anywhere from a 10 minute drive to 25 or 30 minute drive, depending upon traffic. One of the other things that both Pompano Beach and Deerfield Beach have in common is, we talk about it all the time, everybody talks about it. It's the weather down here in South Florida. Every sunshine 325 days a year, warm in the winter, warmer than most of the United States. And uh, of course, we do get a lot of heat in the summertime too. But early October, six o'clock in the evening, and it's in the low 80s, the nice little breeze coming off the ocean. You just can't find anything wrong with that. Comfy? Perfect. See, Pompano Beach has some wonderful amenities. There, these are basically the utility stations and the hospitality stations everywhere. They're usually about every two or three blocks, so that uh, people who can walk up and down the uh, sidewalk, much like Suzanne is doing, <laughs> which is nice for women, especially. They have the bathrooms here, so you're not having to worry about going into a restaurant, going and using those facilities. And they're nicely appointed. They have stalls, you know, with doors, so that's perfect. So if you're out for a stroll in the morning, or if you're doing activities here, as you'll see a little bit later on, they've got a weight area where you can do some workouts. They also have yoga in the park. So whether you're here for the day at the beach 
beach or if you're doing activities or a nice stroll with your family, they have bathroom facilities that are nicely appointed. And of course, most importantly, they're clean. Kevin and I noticed that there was a lot of thought put into designing the Pompano Beach garage. One of the best things I think is there is a sea turtle friendly lighting system throughout the building. In addition, there are electric charging station. The parking is always enforced on the beach, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can either use a ticket, you can pay by phone, or you may use a passport parking app to pay. There are different hourly rates depending on if it's a weekday, weekends, or holiday and events. There are five zones. The cheapest I noticed was zone five. It will run you about $1.50. There's a variety of prices, holiday and weekends, or special events can run up to $4. Located on the intercoastal, there's the Atlantic Jet Ski and Boat Rental with a wide variety of boats that you can rent. There's also paddle boards, kayaks, or you can book a deep sea fishing tour. You can also go aboard a glass bottom boat. That's always a favorite. And this will be at the Sand Harbor Resort Marina. Pompano Beach is more than just a beach. We talked a lot about the beach and showed a lot of stuff at the beach, but Pompano Beach actually is a lot more than beach. It's home to 110,000 people. It's rated 23rd out of 205 on best places to live in the United States. There's all kinds of great things. 52 different parks and recreations, including a public golf course, an air park. There's the Isles Casino and Resort, which is undergoing a huge, huge renovation. Well, what kind of renovation? They're getting rid of the harness racing track, but they're expanding the casino. They're putting in some very high end and accommodations. They're also going to build some condos and some townhouses. They estimate an increase in all kinds of stuff for the area. They're going to hire a lot of new people. They're going to make improvements to the infrastructure, which is always good for anywhere. You also have over 40 different neighborhoods in Pompano Beach. You have all kinds of great neighborhoods and all the neighborhoods are out there and there's a lot of diversity in there for a lot of folks. Everybody kind of has a place to be in there. There's also a lot of awesome places to go that are not on the beach. Gianni's, the Italian restaurant, which just as a kind of FYI for folks, if you go there during lunch, before three, you get the same size dinner portion at a lunch price. They have a great salad there. And the, and the food is just incredible. We have the Foundry, you have Houston's, you have all kinds of different things. There's Indian restaurants, there's all kinds of Chinese restaurants. You also have a lot of great things for kids to do too. So I mean, there's- Oh, you know what you forgot? The Luppies, they have live entertainment. It's actually right next to the air park and close to the public golf course. Live entertainment every Friday and Saturday night. It's just a great place to go and a great place to go check some things out. The other thing is, is that, you know, Pompano Beach has actually been keeping up with the infrastructure. So some of the challenges from a traffic perspective that we have seen in other areas like you know, downtown Fort Lauderdale and going out maybe towards Coral Springs and Coconut Creek, you know, Pompano Beach is doing a lot to make sure that the infrastructure is there to support it in advance of all the changes that are being made for the Alice Casino. Also, let's not forget the farmer's market that starts up in October and runs through May, where they have all kinds of stuff that's brought in, in addition to food trucks coming in and stuff like that. There's a lot of things going on on Pompano Beach that are actually outside of the beach itself. Even though beach is in the name, Pompano Beach is more than just the beach. the other beach, Deerfield Beach. It's the little brother of Pompano Beach, but it has just as many things going on as you can see around here. And of course it has right behind me, the beautiful beach here. Deerfield Beach is kind of a cool little area. It's got a lot of eclectic shops, got a lot of eclectic things to do. One of the neatest things about it is that back in the 20s, when Al Capone was running his bootlegging industry, basically he fell in love with an opera star down here that was performing down in Boca. History tells us 
supposedly he kidnapped her and held her up here on Deerfield Beach Island. Now, I don't know how true that is, but it sure makes for one heck of a story around Deerfield Beach. Deerfield Beach Island here, where we are now, is what is known as a barrier island. Basically what that means is that there's, there's a body of water between it and the beach and the Atlantic Ocean. We're out here walking around Deerfield Beach, kind of checking things out, looking to see what's going on, checking out the people here. <laughs> You know? Did you catch that? Yeah. You Whoa. caught that? You caught really? that awesome. Awesome. How old are you? Gracias. años? Four. 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 Four years old. Oh, dude, you're, you're starting off young. Yeah. All right. That's a cool looking fish. Did you have fun? Yeah. That looks like it. Looks like you're having a blast. Is that dinner tonight? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so you like fish, huh? Uh, Biting out? They biting? That's awesome. Is that your first fish? Yes. That's your first fish? Oh my goodness. That's wonderful, Kev. This is his first fish. High five. Yay. Good job, my friend. Good job. Good job. Well, we got a budding fisherman here. That's yeah. amazing. Look at that. Congratulations. One of the things that Kevin and I really like about Deerfield Beach is that it's a blue wave certified beach. It's super clean, it has nice silky sand. Another thing is that we do like the underwater camera. The camera is placed at the ocean floor and this is at the end of the pier. It's about 30 feet below the water near one of the pilings and on the monitor it shows a variety a fish and now this is a live feed. Some of the fish that you can see are snapper, you can see snook, there's barracuda, trigger fish, tarpon, there's sharks, there are turtles, and Deerfield Beach, the International Pier, attracts fishermen from all over and many visitors year round. Deerfield Beach and Pompano Beach also have a few other things in common. Number one is the cities don't end at the beach. It goes out into the mainland. There's a lot of stuff that they have to offer out in the mainland. I mean, Deerfield Beach has some wonderful communities and neighborhoods, much like Pompano Beach does. The other thing is, is that Deerfield Beach has something that really nobody else has. They have Quiet Waters Park, which in addition to being a huge, huge park for everybody to go relax and enjoy in, they also have Ski Rixon. Now, Ski Rixon, for those of you that don't know, it's basically water skiing, on a cable and it goes around a 2700 foot oval. Now I've never tried it, I've seen it a couple times and it looks like it's a blast, it looks like it's a lot of fun. That's something that is definitely worth checking out. The other thing is, is that you have Deerfield Beach Island Park, which is kind of like a nature preserve on the water. You gotta get there by boat, which is kind of neat because you can take a little leisurely trip around the intercoastal waterway. It's got all kinds of indigenous plants, all kinds of wildlife, but it's basically taking you back to the way things were before all of the commercialization, all of the building and all of the industry and stuff like that came into this area takes you back to the way things were back in like the 30s and the 40s. It's a really nice place to kind of relax, see what's going on, do a little people watching because there are lots of bird watchers out there. There's lots of people going out there looking for nature and nature hunters. It's just kind of a really neat place. Some of the other things that Deerfield Beach has, incredibly great places to eat. One of ours, and we mentioned this before in other videos about Deerfield Beach, is the Whale's Rip. It's a great place to go. The Deerfield Beach Pier itself has a wonderful place to eat. There are all kinds of food. There's also Packy's Pub, the sports pub out there. There's enough TVs in there, so basically if you follow a college, there's probably a game on that TV on Saturday afternoon. So what would you say was the difference between maybe housing between Deerfield Beach and Pompano? I've been waiting for this moment. I think it's probably the availability of housing. Deerfield Beach is a little bit smaller with about 80,000 people there, whereas Pompano has about 110,000 people. Pompano's a little bit larger, whatnot. Deerfield Beach is kind of built up around using a lot of villas and a lot of condos, and Deerfield Beach really saw its origins in kind of the vacation and the snowbird type of a market, where people would come down for the winter or come down for the high season. They'd have a condo or they'd have a small villa or even a small co-op down here. There has been some increase in the number of single-family 
homes in Deerfield Beach. But again, Deerfield Beach for the housing market kind of got its origins in the condo, the villas, the townhome market, whereas Pompano Beach kind of got started on the single family homes close to Coral Springs, Coconut Creek. Now, that's not to say that there are not a lot of condos and a lot of availability for condos and vacation homes and second homes in Pompano Beach. Or even Airbnb. There are some places down here that will actually even support the Airbnb place. Pompano Beach being a little bit larger in both population and an area, kind of also the increase in the number of single family homes and the increase in the family areas per se just came a little bit quicker to Pompano than Deerfield. One of the things that Deerfield Beach does have that Pompano Beach doesn't have is it has a lot of that Boca influence because it is right on the line to Boca Raton and on the line to Palm Beach County. So a lot of the culture, a lot of the arts, and a lot of the things that Boca has become known for you have access to in Deerfield Beach, but you have access to it without the high prices that you pay going into Boca Raton. You can get the benefit of being close to Boca, but you're not going to pay the premium that you would pay living there, basically right over the county line. There's a lot of things that both of them have to offer. Our suggestion is, is that if you're like us and you can't really pick one or the other, come down and check out both of them. You must come and visit us. What would you say about the taxes and the difference? I think because it's in Broward County, the taxes are pretty close to the same. Basically, it really kind of comes down to what you're looking to do and how you're looking to do it. In Broward County, whether you live in Deerfield Beach or Pompano Beach, you still have the same real estate tax benefits of the homestead exemptions that come through. It kind of works out the same way. I think the biggest thing that we're going to see the difference is going to be in the number of single family homes and the number of neighborhoods. In Deerfield, it has a great park. It's called Sullivan Park. And it's on the west side of the Intracoastal. There they have a picnic area, it has a boat dock, shaded playground. Another feature at Sullivan Park, you go down to the walkway and there's a shuttle that'll take you over to Island County Park. Island County Park is a nature preserve. They have mangroves, they have swamps, they have a walking trail. This place is only accessible by boat. The shuttle runs Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 10 until 3. They have uh, shaded picnic areas. There's obviously the trails. And that's something that Deerfield Beach has that is open to everyone and it's a great place to visit. Again, We'll leave that up to you guys to come down and check it out. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to let us know and hit us up. If you found anything interesting or anything enjoyable about this, let us know. We'd love to get your feedback. So until next time, I'm Kev. And I'm Suze. And we're living in Fort Lauderdale with Kevin and Suze.